In this video, I'm going to teach you exactly what Wall Street traders do and how they make money, having worked as a trader myself for the past two years. My name is Mert and I'm a quant trader. I've worked at two different hedge funds, now currently working at a high frequency trading firm. And this is a video I wish existed when I was trying to break into the industry. So let's get started. So we'll be covering three different types of traders across the street. First, we'll be covering hedge fund traders. Then we'll be covering high frequency traders. And then finally, we'll be covering investment bank traders. Because to be completely honest with you, all traders across the these firms do very different roles and different ways in which they make money. So out of the three, I have experience having worked at a hedge fund and now currently working at a high frequency trading firm. The only one which I don't have an experience in, but I work very closely with is investment bank traders. Across the board, they all do very different things and how they make money. We're going to break exactly what they do in full detail. Let's start with hedge fund traders. Now, this is the one which I think surprises most people, to be completely honest. Most people think hedge fund traders as the people who actually make the shots and guess where a stock or whatever they trade goes up, down, etc, etc. But that's actually not true. The traders at a hedge fund are not the people who actually generate PL. Majority of the time, when you hear the term trader at a hedge fund, it usually means execution trader which is very different compared to the other two categories. In fact, we're going to break down traders into two categories, PL generating traders and not PL generating traders. Obviously, it's gray and we're going to talk in detail on what that actually means. In a hedge fund structure, the way it works is you usually have a chief investment officer that's at the top. This is for the actual investment side of the firm. So not middle office and back office, which is like ops. Um, etc. In front office, you usually have a chief investment officer, and then you would have below that, you'd have a bunch of portfolio managers. And then finally, at the bottom, you'd have investment analysts. And this is basically the team that generates PL. If it's a large firm, you might have senior portfolio managers, junior portfolio managers, and same with analysts, you might have senior analysts and junior analysts, etc. That's the PL generating side of a hedge fund. In the front office, you would also have the traders, which are responsible for execution, hence the term execution trader. Sometimes they're called trader or execution trader, but they're responsible for actually executing the trades, which the portfolio manager and the analyst decides that they want to do. So I'm going to use a long short equity fund as an example. In a long short equity fund, you'd have the portfolio manager who has a portfolio of stocks that they go long and short in very basic terms. You'd have the investment analyst provide support. This would be through doing um, financial modeling, research, going on to conference calls and all the grunt work that the portfolio manager doesn't do. Then the portfolio manager would make a decision. In that portfolio, they want to add, let's say, a thousand stocks of Apple. When they want to buy a thousand stocks of Apple, the portfolio manager will internally ask the execution trader to execute that order on their behalf, on their book. And when I say book, I'm talking about the portfolio, basically. Then the execution trader would say to the portfolio manager, do you need a specific type of order? Meaning, do you need me to execute this throughout the day? Which means the trader would have complete freedom into when they actually execute the order. Or they would say, the portfolio manager might say, can you execute this as soon as possible? Which would mean you have to get it done now. Or they could say, don't execute it now, but execute on the auction, which is at the end of the day when the stock market goes into auction. And then it's the execution trader's responsibility to execute that trade at the best price. So the execution trader would be trading electronically, voice through Bloomberg, etc with the sell side traders, so investment bank traders. For example, again, with a thousand shares of Apple, the execution trader will be trying to get the best price. If they have complete freedom, they'll be calling up Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, etc., to try and get the best price. And one of the key elements of their role is to keep that relationship with different banks. So hedge funds are clients of investment banks and hedge funds are buy side firms. So when they want to buy a product like Apple, they're trying to make money with a prediction. So the portfolio manager's role is to generate PL, is to find alpha, to find where the delta of that instrument is going to go. The execution trader is then trying to do that at the best price. And then the hedge fund is a 
in general is trying to make money through delta trying to predict alpha and then on the other side you have the investment banks let's say the execution trader found that the best price was going to be with goldman sachs the trade on the other side this would be the sales trade on the other side would then execute that order and then trade it off so let's explain that investment bank traders are market making they're not market taking before we talk about investment bank traders let's explain what is a market maker and what is a market taker because there are very different types of orders and responsibilities in a healthy market i'm sure you hear that term everywhere but what does that actually mean in this example the hedge fund is the market taker means when you have an order book i'll put it up somewhere here you have a bunch of levels where orders are going into there is no single price there is lots of bids and lots of offers the hedge fund is taking liquidity away from the book by buying the asset now on the other side the investment bank trader is actually creating the market and the way they do that is by putting maker orders in the exchange or on the order book the investment bank trader is constantly buying and selling based on their fair value of that instrument so the investment bank takes on that risk and when i say risk it means owning something meaning if it moves you make or lose money so the investment bank takes on the risk using their balance sheet and then trades it off so they hedge off that risk so in this case if the hedge fund buys that apple stock it means that the investment bank goes short for that trade which means the investment bank then has to hedge that short risk by buying apple stock does that make sense so to recap in an order book you have a bunch of levels when you take liquidity away your aim to make money is to guess where if it's going to go up so if i buy something i'm actually willing to pay for it so i pay a little bit of spread to buy that because i think it's going to go higher or lower respectively if i'm a maker i am constantly quoting across the order book at different levels to lots of clients and the idea is you make money from the spread from the bid offer spread that you're providing the main value that an investment bank brings to wall street is liquidity provision they buy and sell because if they didn't the prices would be volatile and the more amount of liquidity there is it means that the price of an asset converges into a fair price so an investment bank trader makes money on the spread they do not guess if it's going to go up or down the hedge fund on the other side makes money from trying to predict whether something's price goes up or down however that's not the responsibility of the trader that's the responsibility of the portfolio manager that being said some hedge funds do allocate funds to traders to trade and make money etc but usually when you hear the term trader at a hedge fund it means an execution trader but on the investment bank the trader is responsible for the PL. however small caveat on the investment banks they do sometimes allocate funds to proprietary trading directional bets as well and then finally high frequency firms where do they sit high frequency trading firms and proprietary trading firms fall into loose categories they do a lot of different things so a lot of the high frequency trading firms which you know whether it's like jane street uh flow traders etc they're market makers um, they also do have some proprietary trading as well so they do take directional bets into whether something's going to go up down and they trade at very very fast speeds however a lot of high frequency trading firms are market makers similar to investment banks their traders are actually responsible for the pnl and a lot of the responsibility of a high frequency trader is monitoring algorithms what does that look like in a high frequency firm similar to an investment bank the trades are done algorithmically well a lot of all the trades are done algorithmically but the trader's responsibility is if their market making is to sit delta neutral again they're not trying to predict if the price of something goes up or down they provide liquidity to the market they quote at different levels they they constantly quote on exchanges they might have an otc franchise that means they have clients that they trade with them basically the firm becomes an exchange 
I could do more detail on what that looks like, but basically their clients rely on them basically willing to buy and sell. The best way to imagine that is when you go to a kiosk at an airport, they're always willing to exchange your euros for sterling, to knock, etc. And the kiosk always makes money, right? Well, you get a little bit less money. And the reason for that is they make markets. They're willing to buy at their given price at all times. And that's the value that high frequency firms and investment banks bring to Wall Street. They provide liquidity across the order books. They, they give the people who want to trade instruments liquidity so they can trade at a fairer value. In fact, they do a lot of things. So some high frequency firms are simply proprietary trading firms, whilst others are just market makers. And they deal with very, very low latency trading. And one more way liquidity providers make money is actually through rebate. So exchanges will actually pay liquidity providers like high frequency firms to actually make markets because making markets could be costly because the idea is you are always willing to buy and sell just you pick the price so an exchange is only as good as this, how liquid it is so exchanges will pay money for liquidity providers to actually quote on their exchange so you can think of this as the exchange will pay liquidity providers and the liquidity providers might lose money by making on their exchange but then they get paid through the exchange for a rebate if you've enjoyed this video and learned something please drop a like if you have any specific questions or want me to do a detailed video in any of the stuff that i talked about today please drop a comment and i'll make sure to cover in the coming videos